In the previous lecture, we had started looking at the notion of partial derivative of functions of several variables. Uh, we looked at some examples how partial, partial derivatives uh, are applied in marginals of uh, a model. Uh, let us start by looking at uh, the Cobb Douglas model, which we have introduced in the previous lecture, and look at the marginals for that. So, let us just recall uh, that the production function in Cobb Douglas model is given by Q is equal to, it is a function of two variables K and L, where K is the capital and L is uh, the labor input, and it is given by A uh, into L raised to power alpha and uh, K raised to power beta, where uh, this should be K. So, where uh, A, alpha and beta are positive constants and K is the input, uh, capital input, L is the labor input. So, modulo the change here. Uh, so, this is a function of two variables, uh, A into L raised to power alpha, uh, K raised to power beta. So, this is a typo keep in mind. So, once that is given, once we differentiate this with respect to L, so Q with respect to L is partial derivative of Q with respect to L. So, here uh, A is a constant and L raised to power alpha. So, uh, this alpha comes out and so it is A into alpha raised to power 1 minus 1 and this because is, type is a K which does not depend on B, uh, alpha, uh, labor that is capital. So, that remains as it is. So, that is equal to alpha into L raised to power alpha minus 1 into K raised to power beta. We can put the values of, uh, you know, we can multiply numerator and denominator by L. So, that will give you alpha L raised to power alpha K raised to power beta divided by L. So, but now uh, recognizing that numerator is, uh, is alpha times this. So, the numerator is alpha Q by L. So, uh, the marginal with respect to L can be written as alpha Q divided by L. Similarly, the marginal with respect to K is the partial derivative of Q with respect to K. So, partial derivative of uh, Q with respect to K will be A L raised to power alpha into beta K raised to power beta minus 1. And once you put these values, uh, uh, multiply and divide by K and use that equation, you get beta into Q raised, beta Q by K. So, we can represent the marginals uh, in terms of uh, the original product function as it is. So, let us see an interpretation of this. Um, so, both the marginals are first of all positive because alpha is a positive constant, Q is positive, L is positive, beta is positive. So, uh, Q marginals are both positive. So, keep in mind what is marginal? Marginal is the partial derivative. So, they being positive indicate the function is going to be increasing. So, let us uh, uh, analyze this further. From the previous equations, let us calculate uh, from this equation, let us calculate alpha. Alpha is L times K O L divided by Q and similarly beta is uh, K times Q K divided by Q. So, let us uh, use these values uh, to find alpha and beta. So, it is Q O L divided by Q by L. And now, let us uh, interpret this was the partial derivative of Q with respect to L. So, this is the marginal product of labor and Q by L is the average uh, uh, product of labor. So, um, alpha the constant is equal to the marginal product of labor divided by the average cost of labor. Similarly, from the second equation you will get that beta is Q partial derivative of Q with respect to K divided by Q and K, Q by K. So, the numerator is the marginal with respect to the marginal product of capital with respect to the capital marginal and uh, the uh, denominator is nothing but Q by K. So, that is the average product of uh, the, the capital. So, alpha and beta are equal to this. So, if we add them, uh, these two equations, so Q L multiplied by L plus Q K multiplied by K. So, this taking it up is alpha q plus uh, beta q. Uh, so, that is equal to alpha plus beta into q. Um, uh, some small typo here, small q is same as the capital Q. So, that is only a notation. So, keep in mind small q is same as capital Q. So, you get uh, this uh, q l, the marginal multiplied by l 
is marginal of capital multiplied by the capital is equal to alpha plus beta times uh, q. So, that says that if you want this uh, quantity uh, left hand side to be equal to uh, 1, then uh, you should have alpha plus uh, beta equal to 1 because when alpha is equal to 1, beta is equal to 1, you will get this is equal to uh, 1. So, that uh, that means, uh, that means that uh, the total change in input, so q l marginal into l that is the total change in input plus the total change in output that is q k multiplied by q is 1 if alpha plus beta is equal to 1. So, this uh, scenario in economics is called as uh, the constant returns to scale. So, whatever is the total input uh, that equals to the total uh, change in the output. So, that is how marginals are used uh, in uh, economics uh, for the functions of several variables. Let us continue our study of uh, partial derivatives of functions of several variables, uh, two variables. So, let us look at the function f x y is equal to x y divided by x square plus y square. If x y is not equal to 0 and it is x y uh, at the point 0, the value is 0. So, this is the function which is defined by this formula when the denominator is not equal to 0. So, that is equal to 0 when x is equal to 0 equal to y. So, at that point we define the value to be equal to 0. So, for this function let us uh, fix uh, the x variable as 0 and consider the map y going to f of 0 y. So, when um, x is fixed as 0, so the function is x y that is 0 divided by uh, y square, so that is equal to 0. So, as a function of the variable y, when x is fixed at 0, this is a constant function uh, y going to 0. So, naturally for this the partial derivative at this as a function of one variable is differentiable and the derivative is equal to 0. Similarly, for um, when you put uh, y equal to 0, again this function is identically equal to 0. So, the derivative at 0, 0 is again equal to 0. So, for this function both the partial derivative at 0 exist and are equal and equal to 0. Uh, however, if you put um, if you take the point not equal to 0, 0 and look at the derivative. So, then uh, the value uh, then the function is given by this formula. So, to find out the partial derivative uh, for with respect to say x when x is fixed as x 0 uh, with respect to x when y is fixed at y 0 we will have to apply the quotient rule. So, applying the quotient rule when uh, we want to find the partial derivative of uh, f with respect to x at the point x 0 y 0. So, partial derivative will be the denominator raised to power uh, 2 at the point x 0 y 0. So, that is x square plus y square raised to power 2 into the derivative of that uh, into uh, derivative of uh, the uh, this denominator as it is. So, that will be x square plus y square into the derivative of the numerator with respect to x. So, that will be y. So, the first term will be y into x square minus y square minus the second term will be x y into the derivative of x square plus y square that is 2 x. So, that will give you uh, 2 x square. So, uh, that we can combine uh, together. So, the partial derivative at a point not equal to 0 0 uh, comes out to be with respect to x is equal to this. So, um, and similarly the partial derivative with respect to uh, y at a point x 0 y 0 is given by uh, x 0. So, using quotient rules uh, with um, the point um, y 0 fixed here and the point x 0 fixed here, we can calculate the partial derivatives. They come out to be equal to this. Now, let, let us analyze uh, both the partial derivatives of f exist everywhere because they existed at 0 0 and they existed at every other point. So, partial derivative for this function exists at every point. Um, now, one would like to know uh, what about uh, this function as a function of two variables. So, the, uh, we want claim that this as a function of two variables is not continuous uh, at the point 0 0. Uh, to see why that is so, uh, one method uh, could be uh, if you take uh, you approach see to find out uh, continuity at the point 0 0, 
we have to approach uh, f x y, we have to let f x y go to uh, find the limit of this as x y goes to 0 0. To, so, uh, let us find it, it uh, this limit along a particular path. So, let us say for example, you take y equal to x. So, you approach the point 0 0 along the line y equal to x, then the function along y equal to x will be f x x. So, that will be x square divided by x square plus x square. So, numerator and, and uh, denominator will cancel out, x square will cancel out. But instead of taking just the line y equal to x, we could have taken also a line y equal to m of x. So, a line with a slope m. So, if you take y equal to m x and find out the limit of this along the line y equal to m x, that will be x comma y will be m x. So, you will have again m x square and denominator will be x square plus m square x square. So, x square will cancel out and the ratio will turn out to be 1 over 1 plus m square. So, that means along the line um, y equal to m x, the function is constant and is equal to 1 over uh, 1 plus m square. That means along different lines as you approach the point 0 0, the function values approach different values. That means the limit of the function does not exist and hence the function is not continuous at 0 0. So, this is how one analyzes continuity of functions of two variables uh, at a point. Uh, we will not have much opportunity to use uh, continuity, but uh, concept of continuity for functions of two variables can be defined as in terms of uh, as for functions of one variable. So, let us go a step further. So, note that, so this example shows that the existence of both partial derivatives at a point need not imply continuity of the function at that point. So, existence of both the partial derivative is not good enough a condition uh, to ensure continuity. Like in one variable, we said uh, differentiability implies continuity. That is not the case in function of two variables. Just uh, uh, existence of partial derivatives is not good enough. One can define the notion of uh, differentiability for a function of two variables, uh, which is stronger than the notion of continuity and also stronger than the notion of existence of the two partial derivatives, but we will not go into that uh, in this course. So, those of you who are interested in knowing uh, more about this, uh, probably should look at uh, the web course, uh, which is uh, on mathematics 1, uh, which is available at this site. Uh, NPT, this is NPTEL web course on calculus. Uh, so, if you are interested in knowing more, more about the differentiability of functions of two variables, uh, go to this site and you will find the complete course on calculus of one and several variables, which you can read uh, for your uh, more uh, knowledge completeness if you like. So, um, with that reference, we move on and uh, we look at the applications of notion of partial derivatives in economics. So, recall for a function of one variable, we have defined the notion of elasticity of demand uh, for function of one variable. So, that was a proportionate uh, percentage change in the output with respect to the input. So, we can apply that concept uh, to a function of two variables. So, let us look at uh, that. So, consider a situation where the demand of a product A, a product is uh, called A is being produced and uh, the demand for this A uh, depends on, on its price. The price of the commodity A is P of A and the price P of B uh, of a uh, substitute B, which is also available on the market. So, uh, you can think of A and B two products uh, available on the market uh, with the same uh, use and for A the price uh, is P A and for B the price is P of B. So, let us uh, look at uh, the demand function. So, demand function uh, Q of d will be a function of uh, P of A and P of B, right. So, price of A and price of B together uh, um, in both of them um, will decide what is the demand of uh, that product, right. So, uh, this is a function of two variables. P of A is the demand uh, price for A and uh, P of B is the price uh, for 
the substitute which is B. So, uh, there are two possibilities uh, of elasticity of demand for such a function of two variables. One is that if with respect to the change in price of A, the com commodity itself. So, this is called own price elasticity of demand. So, the elasticity of demand with respect to the product A is called own price uh, commodity, own price elasticity of demand. One can also look at uh, how the things are changing with respect to the product B. So, uh, the second with respect to the change in price of B is uh, called cross less elasticity of demand. So, uh, elasticity of demand which is with respect to uh, the price B, price of B uh, with A fix, price of A fix will be called as the cross uh, elasticity. So, it is going over to the substitute. So, here is the own uh, price. So, let us uh, try to uh, compute both of this. So, the price, uh, own price elasticity is the derivative uh, of uh, the demand with respect to A. So, that is because it is a function of two variables. So, it will be uh, uh, partial derivative of the demand function K O of D with respect to the price P of A into the price the ratio of price of A into K O of D. So, that is a formula for function of one variable. If we treat K O as a function of the one variable P A itself, then this is the elasticity of demand by that formula. And similarly, if we treat uh, A fix and look at as a function of the variable B, then the elasticity of demand K O of D uh, will be a partial derivative of Q uh, demand uh, Q D with respect to the P B, the price of B into the price of B divided by the demand K O of D. So, these are the two uh, uh, coefficients of elasticity of demand. So, this one is uh, what is called the own price elasticity of demand and this is called the cross uh, elasticity of demand. Let us uh, compute these two quantities uh, for a particular example. Let us say Q of D which is the function of the two variables P A and P B is given by the following relation. It is uh, 100 minus 3 P A plus P of B. This is just an illustration of what we are trying to do. So, if K O of D is this, then we can uh, compute what is the elasticity of demand with respect to uh, A. So, it is partial derivative of this function with respect to A. When you differentiate this with respect to the price of A, so only variable P A is coming here. So, it will be minus 3. So, price uh, uh, elasticity of demand with respect to the price of A is given by minus 3 because this quantity is uh, partial derivative is equal to uh, minus 3 and into P A divided by Q D. So, that as it is, is P A divided by Q D. So, this is a function of uh, uh, P A and P B. Similarly, the second one uh, if we uh, look at the particular example, uh, particular case when P A is equal to say 10 and P B is equal to 20. So, when P A, B, P A is equal to 10, P B is equal to 20. So, we put these values here you get Q D equal to 100 minus 3 into 10 plus 20 which is 90. So, that gives you that the value of the own price elasticity of demand which was equal to minus 3 times P A by Q D is equal to minus 3 times P A is 10 and Q D is 90. So, 10 by 90. So, that is the price own price elasticity of uh, demand. So, that is minus 1 by 3 if you simplify this. So, that means what? That means the quantity of demand of A falls that means the quant quantity demanded of the product A falls by 1 by 3 percent if the price is increased by uh, 1 percent. So, if P A is equal to right. So, that is the change in uh, proportionate change is 1 by 3 percent. So, the quantity demanded. So, this uh, own price own price elasticity of demand being negative that means, it is going to uh, a decrease um, when the uh, when there is a increase in the price. So, quantity demanded of A falls by 1 by 3 percent because this is minus 1 by 3 if the price is increased by 1 percent. 
So, that is the interpretation of this. So, let us look at the uh, second case uh, when q of d as before uh, is same function 100 minus 3 p a plus uh, p b, p a is equal to 10 and p b equal to 20. So, uh, we saw that that gave us uh, uh, partial derivative of uh, q d with respect to p b. So, we are keeping P A fix and you are only differentiating with respect to P B. So, that gives you this all becomes 0 and you get the value equal to 1. And uh, at that point Q D is equal to 90. So, we get uh, the cross uh, elasticity of demand being equal to uh, that partial derivative of Q D with respect to P B into uh, P B by uh, Q D. So, that is 20 by 90. So, that is 0 0.22. So, that means what? That means that the demand for A increases. Now, this is positive. So, this is a, a increasing function. So, the demand for uh, uh, so this means that if uh, the demand for A will increase by 0 0.2 percent. So, this is you can call it as 0 0.2 percent. If uh, the price remains if its own price remains fixed and the price of B is increased by 1 percent because this is cross elasticity of demand. So, 1 percent change in the price of B will result in uh, 0.22 percent change in the price of uh, A. Price of A is kept fixed, only the price of B is changing. So, if the company B uh, who is producing uh, product B increases its price, the demand for A increases. So, uh, by this much percentage. So, this is the interpretation of um, marginals uh, coefficient of elasticity in the scenario of functions of several variables. So, we gave a simple example to illustrate that. So, next we will look at uh, the methods of computing partial derivatives of composite functions. Uh, partial derivative of function of two variables is keeping uh, one variable fix looking at the derivative of the function with respect to the other variable. So, the rules of for partial derivatives for uh, algebra uh, of partial derivatives uh, is same as for one variable namely partial derivative of the sum is equal to sum of the partial derivative as long as the same uh, uh, variable is kept fixed and so on. However, uh, the chain rules uh, change uh, a bit. Uh, because the second variable contribution also will be there for functions of uh, two or more variables. So, we want to look at the scenario of uh, chain rules. Uh, so, they are same as uh, uh, looking at the derivatives, partial derivatives of composite functions for functions of several variables. So, let us look at that. So, let us there are many possibilities. So, we will let us look at one by one some of them. What is called chain rule one? says the following. Consider a function f x y of two variables such that both x and y variables themselves are functions of another variable t say in belonging to r. So, f depends on x and y, but x and y both depend on another variable t. So, uh, that means uh, as t changes x will change and y will change and correspondingly f will change. So, we will have a, a composite function. So, the composite function is f x depending on t. So, one writes it as f of x t comma y t. So, let us denote this by uh, uh, w. So, w of t is equal to f of x t comma y t where t belongs to r. So, eventually what is happening is uh, the variable t gives rise to a pair x t comma y t a pair in r 2. Right. So, we have got two functions t going to uh, x t r to r, t going to uh, y t that is again a function r to r, but put together as a pair we get a function t going to x t comma y t. So, that this inner thing is a function from real line to the plane. So, that is a function of two variables. So, we get two variables and f is a function of two variables. So, f can be evaluated at x t comma y t. So, the resultant thing is a number again. So, this is a composite of two functions t going to x t comma y t and then f taking that point to f of x t comma y t that is again in r. So, w t is a real number 
but in between it becomes a function of two variables. So, if x t and y t are differentiable functions and if f is also a nice function which we call as the differentiability of the function f, then this composite function is differentiable. So, one says that under suitable conditions on w 2 e is differentiable, this function of one variable is differentiable and what is the derivative of this? The derivative is obtained by looking at the derivative of f, because f is a function of two variables. So, it will have two contributions whether you are moving uh, looking at the rate of change according to the variable x or according to the variable y. So, the formula says that the rate of change of w which is a composite function at a point t naught is same as the partial derivative of f at a point a b. So, what is a? a is x dot x t naught and b is y of t naught. So, that value. So, f x at x t naught y t naught into the uh, derivative of x. So, that means there is a contribution in the direction of x axis. So, that is a contribution of the partial derivative of f and the f is evaluated at the that partial derivative is evaluated at the point x t naught y t naught. So, here x t naught is taken as a and y t naught is taken as b into the derivative. So, here it, this contribution is as if you are moving along only one variable x and looking at the contribution of the chain rule. So, that, but there are two variables. So, the other variable also contributes equally. So, plus f y at the same point a b into y dash of t naught. So, this is the what is called the chain rule when t goes to a function of two variables and then a two function of two variable goes into real line. So, this is written as d w by d t. So, w is a function of two variables so f of x y. So, partial derivative of f with respect to x into d x by d t and partial derivative of f with respect to y into d y by d t. So, this is what is called as a chain rule under this composite functions. So, keep in mind so, it is something like one variable, but there are two terms coming. Uh, so, uh, similarly we can write it uh, in a pictorial form uh, w is a function of two variable x and y, x is a function of variable t, y also is a function of t. So, when you want to find out the derivative d w by d t, it is a contribution along the variable x, contribution along the variable y. So, along the uh, x it is partial derivative of f with respect to x into d x by d t plus partial derivative of y uh, f with respect to y into d y by d t. So, that is a chain rule uh, uh, example illustration for uh, the previous uh, um, consideration. Uh, we can have a something similar uh, a slightly more complicated one where w is a function of two variables x and y. Now, x itself is a function of two variables r and s and y also is a function of two variables r and s. So, that means uh, r comma s goes to a point x r s comma y r s. So, it is r 2 to r 2 and then there is a function f from r 2 to r. So, w becomes a function of uh, two variables r and s. So, it is a composite of uh, two functions of uh, uh, and both of them are functions of two variables. So, you can ask what is the partial derivative of w with respect to the variable r, what is the partial derivative of w with respect to the variable s. So, each one is computed as per the earlier conditions as per the earlier methodology algorithm. w is a function of two variables x and y. So, contribution with respect to x plus x itself is a function of two variables. So, its contribution with respect to the variable r. So, that gives you the contribution of the variable x to the first term partial derivative of w with respect to x into partial derivative of x with respect to r. Plus the second branch will give you the partial derivative of w with respect to y into partial derivative of y with respect to r. So, that is the second. So, this gives you the partial derivative of w with respect to r and similarly you can calculate the partial derivative of w uh, with respect to x s that is partial derivative of w with respect to s is partial derivative of w with respect to x into partial derivative of x with respect to x plus partial derivative of w with respect to y plus partial derivative of y with respect to x. 
S. So, this is uh, you get two partial derivatives again by the chain rule. So, similarly depending on uh, uh, the situation how many which variables uh, are uh, composite, uh, how many variables are involved partial derivatives uh, are obtained and these are all called chain rule formulas. So, basically the idea is wherever a function of uh, more than one variable is coming, each variable will give its contribution in the partial derivative. So, uh, we will look at uh, more uh, illustrations of partial derivatives in the next lecture. Thank you.